What up, internet? Today marks the two-year anniversary sure. since we launched WorkerBee uh, publicly online. We've been working on it for much longer than that, but that was when we first opened the store, sold the first bunch of prints, uh, so we thought it would be a nice thing to do uh, to reflect on the last two years, mm -hmm. talk about kind of like a bit of the things that happened, what we were excited about, mm -hmm. what we expected, uh, and also talk about kind of like looking forward, um, what things uh, we're working on right now and what things we're planning for the foreseeable future. Um, so I think we got a list of questions that Becca prepared and we're going to go through them and just kind of like talk loosely about yeah. them. Yeah, that sounds great. Over the past two years, what has been the best or worst part of working together? Uh, I think like when when we were first starting Worker B, it wasn't a hundred percent that you were gonna be involved in it like yeah. day to day. Um, obviously, you're kind of helping with the shoots and things like that, but I think it really organically kind of like transferred it and you taking on more and more stuff. Yeah. Um, so for me, I think one of the most exciting things has been. Uh, feel like two years now in now there's like no question this is like our thing together mm -hmm. um we both have like ownership in our hands in a lot of different aspects of it mm -hmm. and i think the company really wouldn't be the same without both of us um at all so for me the most kind of the coolest development since thinking about it years ago uh has been that this is something we do like almost full time or more or less full time uh together every day mm -hmm. Yeah, I know. I think it's funny for us because since we've been together for a while now and, and having our background uh, being photography, so many people would ask us if if like we ever helped each other with our photography or worked together on a photography. And most of the time it was no, not really. I would assist you on mm -hmm. some editorial and commercial shoots. Um, you would ease my anxiety and nerves during uh, like leading up to whatever photo shoot I was doing. But in having Worker be we work together all the time now and and yeah it was very much your thing in the beginning and, and I was happy to support it um, but like you said very organically it sort of just morphed into both of us working on it and I think that had to do with my like passion and interest of, of working with artists loving design loving illustration um, and being very excited to like either help you find new people um, either online or scouting them out at shows or like exhibitions or print sales that they were having mm -hmm. um, and just being like sort of a like chatty and engaging person in general is very easy for me to kind of get yeah, people's sure. attention. So that's worked out really well, but, and that was maybe definitely like in the first year of working together, but I feel like in the past year it's been a little bit different, mm -hmm. a little bit more focused, building the business, building the business side of things together like a lot more. Well, was, uh, I just thought of a question uh, for you, I guess. What what was one of the things or what's a type of task that you do or like a world that you work in now that you never imagined, I guess, like before work or be being involved in or having to do? Um, is there any kind of like weird novel thing that... Novel, interesting. Um, I don't know. I think like really trying to organize, um, s since I do like a lot of the giveaways, even just trying to find people who would be down to do a giveaway on yeah. Instagram and like really trying to find people that that um, complement the worker bee mission and sometimes you think you can find or you found the best possible person ever and they'll for sure do it and oh my gosh like your missions couldn't have aligned more and they're just not interested so that's definitely like been a bit of a challenge yeah. so if but you then, want to do a giveaway and you are interested oh uh, you should uh, Please hit us contact up me. over email or back DM at us. workerbeesupply.com hit it up um, but then when you do find someone and they're totally into it and they're willing to put like a little bit of effort into it on there and and help customize it or or take the materials that uh, you send them and, and really I don't know judge them up a little bit more even like that's always really exciting yeah it's cool um, when the people when people themselves take like photos of it for the yeah. posts because um, a lot if they request to do that they often have some kind of like very specific vision yeah. for it yeah uh, so it's been really interesting uh, seeing those kind of come up yeah for sure also filming videos that's been really fun too yeah learning how to film more eventually learning hopefully how to edit 
Um, but yeah, making like actually working with cameras and, and figuring out how to focus and which direction you're you're moving in. Are you going forward? Or are you going back? That has been a challenge, but it's been a good challenge, um, and I'm only going to get better at it as we hopefully do more videos. Yeah, we're more actually videos. filming this on a new camera that we're probably going to buy. It's the Panasonic GH5. Uh, so we'll see how it goes. Let yeah, us know in the comments works. if you like how it looks. 4K. Yeah, we'll have to see for ourselves as well. Cool. What else have we got? Um, well, has there been any challenges of working together? Uh, I think it's definitely like for me, I sort of conceptualize a lot of the stuff. It's very earliest stage. And I'm sure uh, kind of like on a daily basis, I'm like, oh, we should go start doing this thing or like, let's go work on that. And yeah, like even, this video. Like this video Becca found out about this morning. <laughs> When half she asleep. woke up half asleep and I said, uh, are you coming in the office? Because I want to shoot this thing. Um, so I think I was down. I'm learning a bit more how to not only work with you. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe we'll talk a bit later. Uh, one of the first people we hired, Emily. Um, just learning when to kind of share different parts that I'm thinking about. Mm -hmm. And maybe it's not worth kind of like sharing every tiny idea at its inception. Um, and similarly, when there is something wrong, even though it might not be kind of like anyone's own intention, how do we resolve those issues mm -hmm. in kind of like a fair way? Yeah. Um, and obviously, I think when you're in a relationship with someone that you're also running a company with, there's this feeling that you don't have to like sugarcoat things as much like, oh, we both get it. We're there day to day. But I yeah. do definitely think uh, or hopefully we're both learning that you know like you can deliver the same comment in a lot of different ways and just because we see all of it together doesn't mean like whatever is in my head or the things i'm considering yeah uh, are in yours as well yeah, yeah. how about you well going on what you touched upon like your mind definitely i feel like runs a mile a minute um which is a good thing because you're always coming up with new ideas or your next great business plan or your next great company um, or whatever and um, I can't necessarily keep up with that um, and so yeah just and kind of like relaying that information from you in, in an appropriate way um, and kind of like accepting how I feel about it or like how I think I can contribute but then also me just trying to deliver things on time for you um, that's definitely been stressful at times, but it also encourages me at the same time to really ramp it up if, if I've been slipping on things. Um, so even though it may not be necessarily fun to hear in the moment, it definitely encourages me to, to get things going um, and really try to stay on top of things day to day. So, oh. but yeah, it's just about good old fashioned, honest communication. Cool. All right. Okay. So what has been the most exciting project we've got to work on in the past two years? Uh, what do you think? Uh, I think like one of the most recent was when we did our Pacha Kucha talk at Shopify. Um, say thank you so much to Amy Bath for inviting us to participate in that. Um, because fun fact, when two years ago when we launched Worker Bee, we were only about a week and a half in to selling our prints when Amy reached out to us to be... I don't know how she found us. Yeah, I don't know. Amy, how did you find us? Um, but Amy reached out to us um, to be a vendor at the at the talks and sell our prints, uh, and that was really great experience. We we didn't have quite the the magical display as we do now. We didn't even have inspirational prints that don't suck as a. It came that night as a thing. Yeah, you said it to a person that night and it stuck. So, um, so that was really cool. And then Amy reached out to us a few months ago to do this talk, a Petra Kucha talk, which was a ton of fun and super exhilarating. Um, there was over 130 people at the talk. So of course it was a little nerve wracking, but we we practiced to a T. Um, and we made it a little humorous and a little enjoyable in that way. Uh, and I had a blast. And just getting yeah, feedback really, from really people fun. was amazing. Yeah. So that was definitely a recent highlight for me. I think also on that talk, like a lot of people that we had worked with came, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. which was really cool because I don't know, you push through these projects so qu quickly, or not so quickly independently, but like you're always on going on to the next thing mm -hmm. that when you see like 
15 people or 10 people in a room that like you've all done a separate thing together with yeah um it's pretty incredible because you're you're always thinking about the next thing and you don't sometimes don't take the time to kind of like really reflect like even this list like the picture kucha talk seems like so long ago now but also yeah. so recent that in like oh like the last two years like that wasn't that's like the present like yeah. i didn't even consider that um but that was fantastic i i really loved shooting um our local color series mm, i think yeah, and kind exactly. of like when we decided that we were gonna do more videos um outside of just the print videos and those are really fun because there's no so often you have like obviously there's clients and you have like very specific things you need to deliver or other people are involved in the edit process a lot um which is is great but it also you're kind of like bouncing yourself off of other people's ideas a little yeah. bit so to have it be like completely out of control and be able to shoot in many different locations with like really interesting people um whether it's Ben Laurie, uh, you know, shooting in Kensington, working with Anyan yeah. from Tiny Blaze Project, who, you know, we found online. And then her work was so amazing and yeah. kind of really saw her account take off. And then yeah. so happened she was doing a show in one of our favorite stores. Yeah. Um, so really jumping then, on that. Yeah, like it was only happening like for a few days. That yeah, show. yeah. So jumping on that. I think that. like the day before we emailed her. Yeah. Um, and then City of Craft as well. Like yeah. uh, we definitely want to do more of those. And I think for me, those kind of more like longer, looser documentary, but like also more creative videos. And I'm really excited to shoot more of. And there's a couple we have planned that um, are hopefully even more sort of I guess cinematic or mm -hmm. interesting and uh, less just like talk like less like this. <laughs> um, but I also get to shoot in like a lot of cool ways and like yeah. using new equipment and things like that. So I really love yeah, shooting local color videos. Um, again, if you know of any kind of cool collaborations between businesses and artists and their communities, uh, especially that involve the community or transform it temporarily some way, um, let us know. Mm -hmm. Drop us another in the comments. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, that was a good one. Yeah, it was really I love cool. Local color. That's great. We'll link some in the bottom uh, as yeah, well. Yeah, definitely. It's been one of the really incredible things is when we started out, we had this idea to make a line of prints, and it was literally just like a you know a line typed in a Google Doc. Um, but now our collection has really grown. Uh, we see like it's going. It's they've been shipped all over the world. We've mm -hmm. sold hundreds of them. Uh, stores carry them. What has been um, maybe like the most interesting part of the process or like the process the artists use or what's like a unique experience from working with artists um i i'll i'll touch on maybe stars like i think i always find it really cool you find someone's work online um and you often or at least i don't have almost any idea how like the process they used to get there mm -hmm. like when we one of the i think the first video we did was sandy's when we got to Sandy Falconer's uh, home and she pulled out the stuff she was making and she started painting like our, our poster, right? Mm -hmm. Like, and it never occurred to me in a million years that she'd be like painting it and yeah. then like digitizing the painting. Like black ink. When I saw that, it kind of really it justified a lot of like why we do the videos. Um, but things like that were really uh, exciting and also for example seeing people's spaces like like Cecil when we came came over um, and he had just finished like redoing his space in anticipation <laughs> of doing the video um, and all of the little like weird like toys and books and yeah. things like that like every person we visit they have this kind of collection of items um, and sometimes we'll have some downtime when the other one is like shooting, mm -hmm. uh, and we'll just like, I, I know both of us just get caught up browsing like oh their gosh, bookshelves yeah. or picking up little toys. Um, I think like seeing that weird world and as like a photographer, you get to spend a lot of time in other people's places, uh, and, and doing video. Um, I think that's been really exciting. Like kind of like seeing all the weird collections. Yeah, for sure. Like well, you see so many like artist spaces online or on Instagram and you're like, one, they're just incredibly like inspiring um, and just very cool and you're, you wish you could explore that space further. So yeah, when we go in to shoot a video, 
And, you know, it could just be a corner of someone's room in their tiny apartment, but they've really personalized it. They have, you know, different ceramic pieces or vinyl toys or record collection or a book collection. Like, I'm so into all that. Yeah. Um, because in our office, this is pretty plain back here, but we have a ton of different knickknacks and prints and, like, just little gems that, that we've collected. And, yeah. and I Let love having that. Let us know if you want a tour. Well, yeah. it's tiny, but it's wonderful. It'll be tiny but thorough. And kind of just like what Jeannie t- uh, touches upon in her Keep Good Company print. Yeah. Like, even if you're working by yourself, having a personalized space like that really does help keep you focused and keeps you company, even if it's an inanimate object. Um, so, yeah, that's been great. Just, I know, the effort that Cecil had put in because he had seen the art- other artists' faces and he really personalized this little nook and it looked fantastic. Um, and also there's like all extremes from like big studios to just a tiny corner just really goes to show you you don't need anything to make beautiful work like everything all that extra stuff around it is like bonus but people some people are also using you know just like like really old laptops to like fancy new computers and the work just speaks for itself it's just like regardless of how they make it or what gear they have or what space they're in um, anyone who's like waiting for the right space or waiting for the right equipment, you're just you're just making excuses. Like yeah. all these people are out there making amazing work with literally whatever. They sit down and they do it. Yeah. Um, Starts on like a sketch pad and goes on a computer and there you go. I think it's also been really cool um, seeing the personal stories and we've definitely started pushing that more that mm-hmm. people uh, bring out or mention as a result of the quotes. Um, yeah. Like just like all the different artists and their interpretation of it, and we were hoping it would be sort of they would have this kind of like inspirational um, backstory, backstory or yeah. something about it. But I think it's been it's been a lot. Yeah, that's that's been coming out a lot more lately, which has been really good. Because um, like I feel like when you get personal like that, uh, it's really going to resonate with people who are watching the video. Um, and it might encourage them to buy the print or just even follow the artist on Instagram because um, they're like, that person's really cool or they've gone th- through something that's similar to me. Um, and I think all of us kind of need to know that we've all got stuff going on or yeah. we're all going through the same challenges, be they creative or personal. Um, it's nice having like a little community around you that you can sort of lean on for sure. So speaking of communities and like the kind of people we have around us, um, we've gone to work on a bunch of really cool kind of like non-print projects. And I think one of the Mm -hmm. big things that people don't realize is there's like this whole other aspect of the business that we're kind of like getting ready to share more, but we we work uh, with a variety of people and kind of like deeper partnerships. Um, So, and one of the first ones kind of, came through Becca and you want to talk a bit about that? Yeah, sure. So last year, um, the company Papermass, which is an art subscription service, they reached out to me to do some photography for them because they were actually really inspired by the Worker Bee Instagram. Um, and they wanted to spruce up their Instagram a little bit more, tell more of a story. That was a really exciting moment because I'd met Kirsten and JP, who are the lovely husband and wife who run Papermass a few years ago just from volunteering or shopping at City of Craft and I thought they were super cool. They both make beautiful art on their own um, and I, I really appreciated the business of Pepper Mass. so when they emailed me that was just like the most amazing surprise um, and it's been fa- fantastic to work with them. Uh, we've become pretty close in the process as well I'd say and it's, it's I don't know, it's really cool just to work with other artists and work in their space. Um, and it's been cool working with you on those two, for sure. Yeah, and we're doing more and more of that um, with kind of right different companies. So hopefully in the next, I don't know, two to three months, uh, we're going to offer that more publicly. But one of the things is like as we've taken on all these other projects, obviously we're both still working, like doing like our own freelance work, yeah. I guess, to a degree. Yeah. Um, a lot of the work I get has now been kind of funneled into Worker Bee more directly. Mm-hmm. Um, and people are starting to hire us kind of through that. Um, but I still shoot a lot of kind of editorial projects, uh, you know, video, do video editing for other people. Um, we kind of like constantly have a full production schedule, um, of both long-term and short-term projects. Mm -hmm. Um, and what kind of stuff do you work on? 
Yeah, so I, mostly anything that has to do with people. So weddings, family portraits, events, and that ranges from you know a small engagement party or birthday party to a much larger, larger sorry, corporate event um, for you know high-end jewelry stores in Yorkville to the YWCA or Design Exchange. So it's been really great. Um, I love working with either design-related um, businesses or obviously companies or organizations that have a deeper cause. But each, each thing that I photograph has its own sort of special attribute. But aside from that, like also I do some work with magazines on occasion, mostly like art space magazines like Uppercase. Mm -hmm. um, and then also creating, obviously, um, photography for companies like Papermass. And Workbee. And Workbee, yeah. yeah. I think one of the biggest challenges has been like managing time and managing kind of like always trying to focus on the next thing yeah. uh, and slowly drive it forward while also kind of delivering all the promises you make, you know, through partnerships and collaborations and client work and uh, like family things, things we want, we just want to do, go travel. Yeah. Um, a big goal has been to figure out how to shift some of that work away from us and bring on more people to help us. And the first person we brought on was uh, Emily Dines or your best friend, Emily on Instagram and having her has been really incredible so essentially what her role is uh, she helps us manage our social media and wholesale uh, kind of like research and outreach um, so we have some internal systems uh, where we kind of like build image banks and then mm -hmm. obviously see on Instagram we have a variety of different kind of like editorial initiatives whether it's uh, takeovers and stories uh, features that we do, uh, kind of like print announcements or day-to-day -day stuff. Uh, we're constantly photographing and sort of like funneling it in. And then Emily helps us make sure we hit kind of like things on a regular basis and are also reaching out to stores in uh, organic and thoughtful thoughtful way. Yeah. So it's been really incredible working with her. It's also been like a big learning experience um, just because you think you kind of bring someone on and they'll solve all these problems. But then in the day you have to prepare things for them, you know, and <laughs> yeah. like more often than not, you end up yourself being the bottleneck. Uh, sorry, Emily. Um, but I think that's been really cool. And even just having like a third opinion, I, yeah. guess, I guess. Yeah, she's been great at that. Um, has been really good. And she has a ton of experience. She works at Kid Icarus, um, who we work with to print our prints. And she's been really helpful in kind of like crafting our message to stores and helping uh, helping us reach out to people and convince people to do these like weird projects that we have going on and just to know like see things coming through and yeah. all, all of those like initiatives uh, like Instagram initiatives are largely uh, like organized by Emily so it's been really incredible without her we definitely couldn't do them and we tried a bunch at yeah. the start and we do like one for a week and then like three months later do another one uh, so to have several kind of features yeah. going out every week, have a constant flow of people doing takeovers uh, and hopefully more stuff in the future as well um, has been for me really, really incredible. And also just like it's more than just us now. Yeah. It's kind of like a bit more, not more real because it's still like even if you're just working on your own, um, but you're forced to think much slowly more like an organization um, <laughs> yeah that's a way, good way to put it yeah for sure and hopefully i don't know china is we're still running out of time so hopefully figuring out ways to bring more people on in the perhaps not too distant future but not too near all right so as we move into year three what do we have to look forward to what are we excited about so for a while we've been like sitting on a new product um, mm, yes. And we sold the first one at Pixel and Bristol. Mm -hmm. Which um, was a very exciting moment for you. Very exciting. Uh, it's been sitting in our office. The actual product has been done and made and sitting in our office since like, like over six December. Yeah. yeah. But obviously, knowing us, all the stuff around it um, is taking a while or took a while, but. We're getting really close to launching it, so I'm really excited to get that out and have like a non-print product. Yeah, it's um, not a printing, guys. I'm really pumped to do more videos. Like, I want to keep doing more videos. Yeah, that's what I was thinking about. 
I just, I like like building the story with you, finding someone that we can do the video with or about, um, and then also just filming. Again, it's been so much fun to learn how to film. Mm -hmm. So more videos, more videos in, I want to say in 2017, but we're halfway through, so. We've been also, there's a lot of ideas we had kind of early on that take a while to, for you kind of like to reach the level or like no meet the people you need to meet yeah, uh, in order exactly. for them to come to fruition. And it seems like we're now starting to circle around a lot of those. Um, we wanted to do, for example, like partnered worker bee prints where we incorporate like the story or message. The mission. Yeah, the kind of mission of a, of a company we really believe yeah. in and then find an artist to kind of bring that quote together and have the three of us collaborate on it in a sense. Uh, so we've got the first one of those in the works now. Um, we've been wanting to launch kind of like more of the media consulting side of it. Mm -hmm. So that we've been working a lot on that. Um, and we've gotten to partner with some incredible companies already. Uh, so really excited to share kind of like everything we've been working on in the coming months. Um, and put that out publicly and see kind of what comes back. Um, and I think the main, the bi a big thing I'm really excited about is potentially um, maybe in like half a year or so, maybe longer, who knows, uh, like starting to find a new space. Yeah. Um, the space we're in is amazing. It's three minutes from our house, um, but it's pretty small. Uh, and there's a lot of things we want to do that we just need more room for. Yeah, definitely. Let's say. Um, so hopefully it's like, equally as far from our home um, <laughs> yeah if we're lucky but not really sure how that's going to happen or when when but i'm really excited at kind of like that everything that will come with it yeah should have come to fruition uh sooner than later yeah definitely and this is something we've been thinking about for a long time mm -hmm. like if not from the uh, the the first prints that we launched it yeah. was definitely like our long-term goal mm -hmm. it's gonna be great mm-hmm what, what other stuff are you excited about uh, or are you excited to work on? Um, I think working with more companies and doing some more media for them is going to be really great. Um, so we just found out that we're going to be doing the photography for the new Broadview Hotel, which is opening up in a few weeks. Um, it looks, from what we've seen of it already, like looks absolutely gorgeous. And everyone who's worked there, or sorry, everyone who does work there has been lovely to work with and interact with. Um, so... I'm just so excited to explore that space with you. And, and they seem, and they seem to it. really care about the yeah. community that they're in and kind of really? working yeah. with with people in kind of like a correct manner and the right manner. Mm -hmm. um, so we're always looking for partners that, you know, there's a, there's a lot of companies that are like, oh, can you do this quick thing for me or whatever. Mm -hmm. But we're always looking for, to use our services to promote um, like long-term goals of those companies. Yeah, and larger missions, like yeah. missions we also believe in. Uh, if we can help that company uh, kind of like succeed and or communicate their message more clearly, then we sort of, that's like a little push that we're able to give uh, towards that goal or towards that larger kind of social mission. Mm -hmm. um, now that we've been doing it for about for two years or more than two years, um, looking back, like what were some of the things that you expected to be easy or expected to be hard and kind of how, how did that actually play out in real life and what are some of the takeaways? Well, I think a good reminder is that things always take a little bit longer than you think they're going to. Um, and that's like everything from securing an artist to securing like a photo gig or, or a, a media uh, relationship. So just being patient, um, but also supporting each other when those things don't necessarily happen and mm -hmm. and trying to stay positive and build the other person back up again um sort of temper i find like tempering your excitement a little bit yeah. you know when yeah. certain projects come up it's easy to be like yeah we're all doing this this is how everybody find like we're gonna tell everyone and then like uh, two days later they're like yeah we're not doing it yeah. um and that happens all the time yeah, like definitely. weekly basis um if not more which i think a lot of people just complain in public about it but it's part of like people are figuring it out yeah definitely um it's always a good reminder that we're all figuring these things out um no matter like what age you are things don't don't work out all the time mm -hmm. for people um but so, so but that's okay like because one thing is that even if it doesn't work out right now it doesn't mean that they, that person won't get in touch with you later on 
Um, and at that point, like y your skills may be a bit better, your way of communicating might be a bit better, um, and that'll really show when, when the person reaches out to you again and, and you develop that relationship or have that conversation. And you're gonna be really prepared and you're gonna knock them off your feet, off their feet, hopefully. Mm -hmm. um, and you never know that they might pass your name along to someone and you'll get another job or gig or, or partnership. Um, so, so yeah, just being patient and, and really tempering your expectations. Yeah. So I thought, I thought of one last thing yeah. that maybe we can end on that you have no idea I'm about to say. Oh, uh, just that, like how we were and I want, doing this video. Today, and I want to just get your reaction to it. No. Okay. <gasps> um, so Jake and Amira. Yeah. You want to talk about that and kind of like what happened or just, or just, um, which part? Well, how our prince ended up in their space. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Okay. So maybe like for those who don't know Jake and Amir, um, what? Uh, well, I, I used to watch Jake and Amir when I was in, I guess, high school um, maybe or like high school. early university. Yeah. Um, and they were like a sketch comedy group on uh, College Humor. And they made these videos about working at College Humor. And that was that. And yeah. Sort of kind of like. I don't know, stop watching for a bit or would come back occasionally. Mm -hmm. In 2013, Eugene introduced me to their podcast, which is an advice podcast of sorts. Um, but The only advice podcast on the internet, internet, actually. Hosted by Jake and Amir. And I enjoy it. It comes out Monday morning, so it's like a nice little pick-me-up um, coming out of the weekend. And it's very silly and like a little immature, but... I mean, they're both really hilarious guys. Um, they don't take it, they're, they're kind of aware of it, so that's yeah. part of the, it kind of works on multiple levels that way. Yeah, and, and after running the podcast for two years, I believe, they um, ended up launching their own podcast network called, called HeadGum. Um, it started off kind of just inviting all their friends who maybe already had podcasts or they thought um, could create a really awesome podcast. Um, to, to be on the network with them and build up that community. Um, and yeah, they, they launched that in August 2015, I believe. And they were running the podcast just out of their home studio for a while. Um, but then eventually got a really dope studio space in downtown LA. And um, once in a while, we'll send out prints to people we're just fans of, yeah. just to be like, thank you, check it out, um, post about it maybe. Yeah. Um, but also just, just people like this, like they got a new space. Mm -hmm. um, so Becca... Yeah, so they ended up coming to Toronto for JFL 42 to do a live If I Were You show. Um, and we of course went. Uh, and again, being my chatty self, I had to um, approach them and say how much I love their work uh, and enjoyed what they did. And of course, ask them if they were going out afterwards and if we could join them, which we did at Parts and Labor. Um, which was hilarious because <laughs> it was just them and we had like an actual like really nice chat with them and and kind of got like a little friendship going there friendship. um but i kind of remained in touch with jake afterwards and offered to send them some prints because i knew that they were going to be looking for a new studio space. yeah they're just starting to kind of like talk about getting a new space yeah yeah, and, and so him and Amir and also their their co-founder, Marty, picked out two prints. Um, and they're currently in the HeadGum office. We're just watching one of their videos, and it's like in front of the print. Uh, you can see it right there. Yeah. Um, what? What was that about? That was the photo of the print. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry, I messed that up. It's all right. It's, this is in it now. Oh, no. Um, yeah, so, so what they've started to do as well is have weekly videos, which are so funny. Um, and it's always, and it's still really exciting. I don't know, it's been like a year now that they've had the studio, but it's so exciting to see one of the prints pop up in the background um, and to think of like all the people that go through the space to record their own podcasts um, who have seen them. And, and I think they, they really enjoy them. Yeah, so. it's pretty amazing. That's, that's really cool. Yeah. It's been such a journey just from, from Eugene first watching them starting in like 2008 when they launched the Jake and Amir um, like sketch series to launching their podcast, to launching the HeadGum Network and then having their own beautiful studio space. Goals. Yeah. And, and meeting them twice now and, and our prints ending up in their office. 
um, just kind of stick with it. I don't like. I feel like if there's someone you admire um, and like really appreciate the work that they do, let them know. Even just like yeah. via Twitter or Instagram or send them some send them something if you can. Uh, people really appreciate it. I guess. I guess on that note, the last yeah. thing to wrap it up is it's also been really incredible. Like for ages, we've been reaching out to people, and now like people are starting to reach out to us about yeah, stuff, whether it's artists, um, like. I think Cecil reached out to us, uh, mm-hmm. potentially. Um, Jeremy yeah. reached out to us. Brandon, Mr. Um, Meat. Mr. Meat, Brandon reached out to us, which is uh, Prince going to be coming out in a few weeks. Mm-hmm. Um, to people kind of emailing us, asking to like intern for us when mm-hmm. we're not, we don't really do that, but um, it's very nice of people to offer mm-hmm. uh, and volunteer to people like Ben Laurie from the local color video who just came up to us and told us about his project and yeah. asked if we'd be interested in doing a video. We're always down to kind of like do fun projects if they fit um, our sort of mission um, or if we think we can just help in a unique way. Mm-hmm. Um, to collaborating with Pixel and Bristle and that whole team yeah. uh, has been incredible and in meeting all of, the, all of the makers who, all the vendors who sell work there. Um, so and also like meeting everyone people off of instagram it's like crazy that people come out to shows um that you've only known online i think one one woman moved from portugal to she won a print Mm -hmm. we sent it to portugal like three weeks later she moved to uh toronto (laughs) and then she was volunteering at city of craft like yeah and we got to meet her in person yeah and and then she's also an amazing illustrator herself so we featured her work on worker be spotlight on instagram so I think those things are so incredible and just a huge thank you to everyone who's bought a print, yeah. to all the stores that carry our prints, uh, to everyone who kind of like shares stuff, watches videos, uh, comments, subscribes. Um, it could be you. No. Um, thank you. Like, thank big thank you to everyone. Yeah. Uh, thank you to Emily uh, for putting up with me. Thank you. To all of our artists for wanting to work with us, for trusting us in the beginning to deliver a product. Um, it's been just like such an incredible journey so far. Thank you for letting me come on board. Thank you as well for your help. <laughs> um, and uh, I hope you enjoyed a little look back on the past two years uh, with Worker Bee. Yeah, we're just getting started. Um, this is where we barely scratched, you know, the tip of the iceberg that we. Want to conquer? Combine two things. Um, (laughs) Exactly. Um, So, yeah, we'd love to have you follow along and let us know if you enjoyed this sort of video. Mm -hmm. Um, Throw us a comment and let us know if you want to see more, what you want to hear about behind the scenes. Um, Maybe we'll start doing them more often. Yeah, that was really nice. Awesome. Cool. Woo! Great job. Year three. All right, so remember to like this video and subscribe if you want to see more from Worker Bee. And of course, you can follow us on Instagram as well at Worker Bee Supply and browse the prints at WorkerBeeSupply.com. Thanks a lot.